Okay, it is uh, Wednesday. That's right, Wednesday, 9:29 a.m., December the 22nd, and this is the main watch list. It's all of these with a number five in the notes section. It could be potential morning panic bounce place, SBES. Just decided to wake up. I'd like to see it maybe do some kind of a breakout or something. But again, I don't really like uh, up training, you know, patterns, breakouts. I, I like morning panic bounce place dip buys, but that will be on watch and this is the only list of stock it's just something to watch really alert from it's trying to hold over this breakout level here in the 330 so I'm just gonna really just take a look at it and see how it trades and yeah let's see if we have any morning panic bounce plays today okay it is 9 46 a.m. I did have um, one trade with TONR I am watching AABB but I probably missed this one I was looking for maybe with this one in particular a downtrend maybe one more red candle testing 24 maybe slightly breaking under it before it turns around and at this point if it were to do it now it would look kind of bearish so I'd probably am I gonna trade AABB and it wasn't ideal in that it wasn't an initial morning panic bounce play but this is one that happened a bit later but um, this one's offering a nice move there was a big person at the bid that popped up and um, that one really helped this one continue to move towards the upside so that's pretty cool I did trade TONR this was like um, a gap down morning panic so it wasn't necessarily a morning panic in that the market opens and it starts down trending right but instead this thing opens down so it's a gap down so the idea is that when you see something like this or at least the way I like to trade it I want to see it consolidate and put up some kind of range and then it breaks out of that range so then you know in theory the morning panic bounce play is in and it's going to start doing the bounce so I was in at 45 I didn't trade a $15 risk level I traded an $8 risk level because this is a sub penny and not just a sub penny but a low price sub penny because you know just a one difference from 44 to 43 that's a lot in terms of percentage right just a few ticks in either direction and that and you're trading with a lot in terms of percent differences so I didn't necessarily want to trade a $15 risk level I traded an eighth one for that reason 932 right about here so again it had a bit of a downtrend then it started to hold above this 43 level and I was in at 45 because there was a lot of support on the bid it looks like it was gonna push it up something like this and you know not just this but also a lot of green prints basically like this let's see if it gets 50 it basically got 50 there's a lot of people at 50 selling I mean it looks like it got the 50 on the chart but you can tell there's 50 here then there's 50 here because it wasn't 50 it was 495 but you know that was what I saw back here um, something similar to that at 932 and I was in at 45 25,000 shares and right at the very next minute at 933 I sold 5,000 shares immediately once I started to see it start to work at 46 and I was too chicken honestly I was too you know um shaky i just don't like how it's just, you know it's a low price to sell penny stock so that was a bit scary and also i haven't really traded at least in my mind a morning panic bounce play profitably so i was extra conservative here i sold 5000 at 933 i sold 10000 shares at 933 the same minute right here and then i was out of the position completely at 934 and that was 10000 shares again at 46. I was just scared that it was going to break 45 and then I'm right on the position and it's going to downtrend. I was just too scared. I didn't have the right mindset, but at least I was able to trade this one and still be profitable. And now I can have more confidence in the next morning panic bounce play and maybe one that's not a sub penny. But um, yeah, I mean, this thing is at 49 by 50. So there was obviously a lot in terms of, you know, profitability about a 10% move if I were to have sold at 49 right now which is pretty cool and um, yeah I, I don't know if I mentioned how much I made I made a small amount it was like I don't know like three dollars and seventy two cents or something like that and obviously I could have been much more profitable I could have sold you know for a lot you know um, better so 
yeah, definitely a lot of room for improvement, but I could have easily have sold at the 48s if I was a bit more patient, but I wasn't. I was just, you know, freaked out because, you know, I was just worried that it wasn't going to do the thing, but I've traded this so many times, I should just have more confidence. I'm going to give myself some slack because it is a low sub penny, but, you know, this one definitely offered uh, the move in it. You know, I never um, let it actually get to my risk level, which would have been if 43 would have broken. And I'm in at 45, and then I cut it right. And maybe worst case scenario, I get out at 40. That's how I calculated my dollar risk level um, off of 40. So if it were to have broken the level I'm risking off of, and then get caught in some slippage as well. So that's pretty impressive. I'll make an update to see what this one does. I will be interested in it if it does like a higher low, a lower low, a double bottom. But um, if it takes too long to get there, I probably won't be interested in it then because then maybe it's too gradual. OWUB did kind of offer a morning panic bounce play, but I don't mind missing this one because this one trades kind of weird. Not with the best volume either. Yeah, AABB did offer the move there, but again, the range isn't even that nice. I mean best case scenario you're in that straight 24 and you almost got the 25 that's like that's like four percent not not the best not horrible um i see a way did kind of offer one but i didn't like it because um, i wasn't watching it and even if i did i don't like how it was right at v wet pretty quickly it did do a double bottom but i feel like this thing is hard to trade because it's a sub penny as well and it has like a bit of a spread I don't really necessarily like the way that one trades nothing with SBES I'll keep watching TONR I'll be watching OWUV AABB but um, yeah uh, that's what I have for right now one trade there could have done a lot better selling I was just too chicken but you know um definitely a step in the right direction at least okay it is 10:53 a.m. and this thing was just too rich for my blood but um, I got in and out of this setup here with JWEL this was a short setup and this is like shorting the bounce after a panic it has this big sell-off here from 20 to as low as $12 which is a lot of range is it and then we have like this bounce I was watching this closely at VWeb to see if it would reject v web but it broke above it and then it just looked like we were having some topping action and that's when i was short this setup now is it gonna be able to be something where i can tell when i got in and out in terms of the time period uh geez maybe not something immediately but i was not in the setup for a really long time i made in theory just 33 pennies just too rich for my blood really it's just something kind of out of my realm to be you know um, short selling a listed stock but um, I saw the setup this is something I would consider with the OTC I wasn't here when it was down here this could have been a dip buy but you know this thing trades with a spread and it is I think a low float listed stock runner they've done this before just a big sell off day today so again I shorted the bounce but I only did one share. I only shorted one share. Why? Because I trade a four dollar risk level with listed stocks. So in theory, I'm short here. For example, at 17.34, right? That's when I was short 17.34, give or take. Worst case scenario, it goes back to the previous co uh, close, which is, you know, about three dollars. So that's pretty close to my four dollar risk level. I can't even trade two shares because then I would bring more risks that's what i would be risking honestly if it were to go green on the day so you know for that reason that's why i was short such a small position i only have a very tiny four dollar risk level and i made 33 pennies but i can't see exactly when i got in and out in terms of time i'm gonna take a look and i'll make an update okay it's 10:58. i made a, a few adjustments i got it working now so yeah, this was a setup. I was short at 1050 and this was right here 1050. This candle right here when it looks like, you know, it just reached the top. It had a wick right here. If I wanted to be extra risky, I could risk the wick in this setup and then trade a larger size, but I wasn't down for that. 
and I was short again at 1050 which was right here right when it looks like it was starting to turn around I was short 1734 barely held on to the position I got out um, 1052 which was right here when I dipped into the you know 16s it went under 17 and then it way it just the way it just came back right and then you know this not being a setup in my realm I got out at what was it 1701 right here 1701 was right yeah right around where it closed again I was short 1050 downtrended broke under 17 it came back immediately I didn't like that I thought maybe this thing has more room towards the upside let me get out and that's what I did and it's true it did continue the uptrend so right now we'll be looking at how it's going to react around 1803 because that's the top of the wick although it trades with a spread so it might not necessarily follow that wick perfectly but you know is it going to break past the wick and make another move towards the upside or is it going to reject and then up, downtrend the rest of the day or something like that it could do that too but if the promoters behind this uh, this is like a Chinese pump like a whatsapp pump if the promoters behind this are really interested in keeping the stock they're gonna want to keep it up so you know they can do another dump some other time so that's what I am thinking about in terms of this I'd be watching how it's gonna react in terms of this wick as for the other setups TONR never really offered like a dip for a higher low lower low or a double bottom setup it just got as high as 53 which is impressive you know, I did a horrible job selling there, but at least I learned a lot from it, and I'm more comfortable trading. You know, morning panic bounce place. Um, nothing here with ICOA that I'm interested in. Unfortunately, it's downtrending, which means less chance of a morning panic bounce play being uh, successful in the future. Nothing with LWUV. I wanted to have traded as a random dip. GRTX, nothing that's it yeah I just had one trade there with interactive brokers 33 pennies and apparently no commissions I was in the setup for just two minutes anyway and um, yeah we'll see if how uh, JWEL does over time right or is it JEWL no that's it JWEL that's all I have I probably won't trade anything else but maybe but I highly doubt it at this point so far as respecting the wick, maybe this was just a final gasp of air before it chokes. Who knows? It is 11.53 a.m. This could be the head of a head and shoulder. Shoulder, here's the head at the 19s. And then maybe it drops and makes a shoulder somewhere in the 18s, 17s, or maybe the 16s. And that will be impressive, but... I'm just gonna watch this one it's probably gonna work but sometimes if they're that hard-headed it's best to leave them alone but this one could obviously do something pretty nice very impressive and I'm happy I covered when I covered even though I did you know head towards uh, the 1650 ish level right at 1050 uh, two I was out of the position right here it didn't you know break past the wick the level I was thinking about it did put up one gasp of breath and then it did fade to the 1630s and yeah when it broke the wick here you can tell it was a pretty significant point it kind of got to it took a little breather it held itself in the 1750s and I mean it made a nice move and now this could, again this could be the head of a head and shoulders super cool and now I could even trade in theory larger because my risk level would be going green on the day. I doubt it could go green on the day, but this stock might be that crazy enough to do something like that. I don't think it will, but there's a chance, of course. But it looks a lot like a head of a head and shoulders. And if it goes green on the day, that would be impressive. That would be a very nice short squeeze. So they might go for something like that, but. I'm not going to trade it. I'm just going to learn from it, I think. And I'll make an update later. If it makes a shoulder, I might consider it. But right now at the head, I'm just going to watch this and see what it can do. 
It is 5.38 p.m. and I am here to call it off. I think I ended up up maybe like $4 and something since. I'm not extremely sure, but as for JWE out, this was definitely what I thought it was. A head of a head and shoulder. Shoulder head, it made a shoulder here. Not a clean shoulder, but it did make one. You can visibly tell a shoulder was made. And um, that was a setup there. It went from the 19s and then to the 18s pretty quickly. It dropped to the 16s, which is the goal to me at least, VWAP. And then look at this crazy short squeeze right at the end, right at the highs again. That is one of the sketchiest wicks I have ever seen on a daily chart. It's like somebody who doesn't look at candle charts, right? I can't believe I'm going to do this. I'm going to change this thing if I remember how because I never do from a freaking uh, candlestick chart to a line chart if I know how to do it I just never freaking use a line chart let me see if I can figure this out without having to close this or I mean just to really go over it in detail let's go over a line let's go over the close <laughs> somebody who's just like you know looking at yahoo finance and they don't even have you know um candlestick charts they're just like oh that's nice okay today we close at 2020 that's super nice they don't know anything about the volume they don't find any suspicion they're just like okay you know all right well it's 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 just down a little but it's looking pretty nice really high up very cool maybe it can keep going they don't even see that this thing literally shot all the way to twelve dollars and that is super sketchy that is a big red flag but you know um they did a great job <laughs> uh so yeah i could have done a short there but i didn't want to i just don't like trying the same stock multiple times you know the same setup a short setup although you know for different reasons this was you know just like to me a top and maybe a short the bounce setup and then this was different sure but I just don't want to retackle something a bunch of times because then I'm not sure if maybe it's just like an attic inside of me that's just you know finding all these reasons I should trade more or if they're actually good setups in this case this was it I can gain more confidence from this I barely held on to the trade you know um, it never really um, broke above this wick when I would have in theory been short this stock and it did get to VWAP which would have been nice but very easily you know it squeezed if I was greedy and I wanted it to touch VWAP or maybe be lower under VWAP I mean I've learned this before shorting I think AAVB you know all of a sudden boom and now you don't want to cover because you want it to go back to this range and then voila we got a short squeeze and that's the setup there pretty nice and it's just going to be something to watch maybe not something I'm going to necessarily consider trading anymore but maybe if it looks clean in the future I will it's definitely something I'm going to watch and learn from and then TONR I had a depressing depressing sell uh, what was I long I was long at yeah I was long at 45 seriously there was no other point the entire day the thing even made a move at 45 you know and I saw it at 46 even that is a never you know a price that it touched the rest of the day it closed at 53 that's pretty impressive I was just too chicken seriously I think these are some of the best morning panic bounce plays the ones that have um, you know a very nice gap down instead of something that downtrends it feels like these things are just looking nicer because the promoters if they're still interested in the stock they try really hard to bring it on a trajectory to you know get somewhere near the highs or at least uptrend so it doesn't look that bad that's all I have as for the other ones nothing interesting with ICOA nothing interesting with um, GRTX nothing interesting with AABB I guess it could kind of qualify as a morning panic bounce play tomorrow LWB did do that panic here, but I wouldn't have traded it. It was later in the day, and I think the way it did it was kind of weird. SBES caught up. You know, this is hindsight 2020. At the moment, I wouldn't have really considered it because of the fact that it didn't trade with much volume back here, but volume definitely came back. And um, I guess maybe a dip 
back to the breakout level at least close to it here could have been an entry but I don't mind that again I'm not really good with uptrending stock setups but you know I, I do like dip buys the opposite but this can be something I can get better at too uh, I'm just really happy overall could have tried to short there sure but yeah a lot of good lessons just four bucks I could have sold a lot better on TONR and um, you know sure I could have covered better with JWEL but I don't mind that I didn't because you know I'm still pretty new to the setup and um, I still have a long way to go and it will still you know push um, you know outside of my limits to get better at it that's all I have for today